All right, now we're gonna have to show you how to do the front. A um, little more involved than the rear. If you can do that, if you're competent enough to do the rear, you can do the front. It just takes a little more time. It's nothing to be scared of. knock that out flat so this nut will back out. That's good. Impact gun saves you a lot of time and effort. Um, if you don't have an impact gun, you know, a big breaker bar will do the same thing. All right, now that we got that off, we're gonna take the caliper off. Two bolts back here, holding it on. One up top. Take that bolt out. One right here. Take that guy out. You can slide. Well, it should slide. It doesn't have too much dirt on it. Slide that out and just set it out of the way for now. Um, back that later with that off. Let you pull this whole assembly off. Just take that and set it aside. Now you can leave this um, cover off, on or off. I like to take it off just to get it out of the way. Then I'm not bending it. I'm not working around it. Um, I find it easier that way. So we're just gonna take it off. Some people prefer not to mess with it and leave it on. I'm using an impact uh, screwdriver to jar jar these screws loose. Make, taking this off makes everything else easier. You can see what you're working on. You ain't fooling with anything. You're not worrying about breaking or bending parts. that down all right now you got three nuts to take off here to be able to get this hub off you got here here and down here um, you got a cotter pin in each one of them so you bend this cotter pin right and get it pulled out sometimes you're able to get them out just with your hands sometimes you need some pliers sometimes you end up Breaking them and need a new one. And the last one over here. Okay. I was able to get all three of those out. Um, start over here, 17 millimeter. And it would help if I went the right way. that off set it aside get the upper ball joint one off and the lower ball joint lower ball joint is a 14 millimeter I believe I've got 12 on We got one more thing to take off. It's this little bolt up here. 
you can't really get to it with how it is. You have to disconnect the upper and lower ball joint to be able to, to free this. So I'm not even gonna mess with this until I get this loose. Um, take my hammer, just give it a little hit the hub. It should just knock it loose enough to be able to get this up and out of there. Same with the, uh, the rear. Should be able to just hit it a little bit. So we may have to do the front or the upper first. There we go. Lower. This brake caliper out of the way. You got a bunch of mud down in there. Get the mud out so you don't strip it. back in and again don't lose it okay back to this guy looks like we knocked it free a little bit to the bench same deal you got a snapper in here take it kind of get some of that dirt out should be good enough That's out. Again, get gets knocked out from the rear, comes out through the front. Put that there. Nice solid area to pound on. I had it. And the little berries over there. All right, with that out, again, we're going to clean up this surface, a little steel wool. Just kind of polish it up just a little bit without taking anything off the surface, actually. Just get the Dirt and grind it worked in its way in there over the years out. It shouldn't be there. And then 
clean a little race where the snap ring went. Get any dirt out of that you can. this part up again. Before I start that, I'm gonna go get the bearing. All right, got the new bearing here out of the freezer. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did on the rear. We're gonna heat her up. Probably spend a little extra time just make sure we have enough heat instead of too little so you don't have to pound it. Keep the force moving around. See if we can get her to drop in. There we go. That worked out good. So now we're just gonna get our snap ring back in. Make sure the seat's in the groove. It's not gonna go anywhere now. And then we'll take it back over to the ATV and get it put back on. Now that we get the bearing pressed in, we're gonna come back over here Insulation pretty much same as uh, removal. Um, we're gonna start by taking a little grease and just rubbing it around this. It'll keep it from corroding and season on there in the future if we ever gotta work on it. Which more than likely we'll have this back in here at another point. Take this, slide it on there like that, which is going real easy. And we're gonna drop it down into the lower ball joint, which is perfect. Push down on it. I'm gonna go into the upper. Um, before we tighten any of this up, we're gonna bring this brake caliper back around and we're gonna get this bolt put back in here. If you uh, don't put this back in at this stage, it gets really hard to get it in because uh, this wants to hit it. I'm actually gonna push it back down and start it. Downfall to big fingers and little parts. Sometimes it's hard to work with it. There we go. We got her started. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up. Uh, Snug down. Get that put back on there. We're going to go ahead and put the castle nut on this upper ball joint. For this, you really just want to snug it, snug it up. You don't need to go overkill tightening it. The cotter pin's gonna hold it in place. So just snug it up. Make sure you can uh, get your cotter pin through the hole there. That looks pretty good. Just slide that cotter pin in there all the way and then just bend one of the sides down with it down. That nut is never gonna back out. Put that in place, we're gonna come put the tie rod end in. Again, we're gonna put this castle nut on. 
just snug it up. And then let the cotter pin do the work. Set that on there. Bend it down. Again, not going to go anywhere. I'm going to take the bolt for that slower ball joint here. Slide that bolt in. Let me get this caliper out of the way for you guys. Put the washer that on. Tighten up. Go ahead and put the cotter pin in here. Bend it here. Up. All right. So with that, I'm come put this shield back on. You got to pay attention how you take this thing off. It can be a little tricky if you take it off and don't pay attention trying to figure out. How it went on there and get these holes lined back up. I am struggling today to get these this stuff started. driver once we snug these down we'll give it a tap of the impact driver and it won't be coming loose That's on there. Slide our rotor on. Put the axle nut back on. Tighten that up. Get it tightened up. We're going to punch this back down. Take her brake caliper, slide that back into place. Bleeder screw is always on the top. If you ever have to bleed it, the air is going to go to the top of the system. Good way to remember it. And we're going to put our brake caliper bolts back in. Tough getting these guys lined up. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera. Put the axe nut cover on and put the wheel on and you're done. That's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward. Don't need a lot of crazy tools to do this. Um, 
This is definitely a do-it-yourself type job if, uh, if you got the tools.